Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and we are back after a month for another video and in today's video I'm going to show you how I won my very first LAN and how my team won $20,000. At the end of the day, it seems like Bobby is the one, he's the maestro behind SDMF. Yep. Always, always impressive stats coming out of Bobby. But how they got here doesn't really matter anymore. It just matters what they do with the opportunity because for FCMN, this is all about redemption. We've played at a lot of like LAN events before, specifically myself and OG. So we feel like LAN is kind of a little bit of an advantage for us over the other teams. We're happy that we have a second chance here. So to start everything off, we had our first match here against West Coast. Now we actually lost to West Coast in the very final day of ESL. They put us to a four and three record and they actually are a surprisingly really good team. Now they consist of Alec, Chepo, Shine, and Falcon. Unfortunately, Chepo couldn't go to the land. So Alec, Shine, and Falcon played. And originally we thought it was gonna be a little bit easy, but it was actually our most difficult match the entire time. So the draft for the first map went like this. The other team had Squeak, B and Griff, and we had Brock, Bo, and Janet. So in the last meta, I actually think this would have been a really good comp, but the balance changes did come out on Wednesday, so three days before the tournament. We didn't have much time to prepare and didn't know too much about the new meta. Uh, the other team did catch us off guard here going Squeak, B and Griff, and they actually ended up winning. Now, it was really difficult for me and my teammates to get really get any type of positioning. Uh, they played it really well, and we actually started off down 1-0 to a team that we kind of thought was going to be a free win. So going to the next set, we subbed in Zar for OG. We were going to do a lot of substitutions during the entirety of the matches because there's a lot of different maps that we have strengths and weaknesses on, and we just wanted to get the best roster possible for every single set. So for this map, we ended up with Griff, Gene, and the Dog, which I think is a very good comp, and it worked really well. We were able to play really easily as a team, work together, get all powered up, and just kind of take our time. It was really easy with the Gene, just kind of getting the heals, the Griff, it's just a lot of HP, a lot of damage, a lot of power-ups, and it worked out really well. We ended up taking this set pretty easily. We I scored a pretty nice goal after messing up a goal earlier in the game, and this is how we tied it up one to one. So going to the next map, it's Deep Diner, and again, we got a very good comp. We ended up with Gene, Ruffs, and Spike, which is really comfortable brawlers for all of us to play. Zara loves Spike, I love Gene, and Sans loves playing the dog. Uh, we played it into Anita, which was really easy to play into. It didn't get any bears across the entirety of the game, and it did get a little bit messy. There were a lot of wild pulls that I hit, but I ended up dying after, and there was a lot of just stuff going on. But we ended up taking the set 2-0 fairly easily. Now, this gave us a 2-1 lead, and we were feeling pretty confident after this one going to the next set because we really like the map that we're going on to. So let's show you guys what happened there. So the next map we have is Shooting Star, and you guys know how we feel about Shooting Star. It's one of our favorite maps that we get to play. Uh, we kind of did mess up the draft here, so our strategy was to leave kind of a lot of OP brawlers open and then just try and take two or three of them after they get the first pick. Unfortunately, they banned Max, Gene, and Fang with first pick, which is Max and Fang kind of makes sense, but the Gene ban is a little bit obscure. I think they knew that we like to leave a lot of brawlers open, and with the Gene ban, they can take one Nani very comfortably, which counters Piper. Uh, we also banned Bonnie, so we really messed up this draft. Uh, I still think it was really winnable. I think Sans is a really bad Griff and should never play Griff ever again. Um, but I, I don't know. This was a pretty bad loss for us, which sent us into double set point again against a team that we really thought was going to be a really easy win for us. So it was getting kind of scary. Uh, we didn't know exactly who to play, but we just kept with the three of myself, Sans, and Zar because we felt like we were doing well. And let's show you guys what happened in that fifth set. So last map we played was Open Zone. Now we kind of messed up the draft a little bit here. So we went first pick B and they followed it up with, I think, Griff and Stu. Now those were pretty good picks i think if we went poco and pam it would have been like an automatic win but we said poco pam with like one second left in the draft and unfortunately we couldn't lock it in so we were kind of stuck with the lola but then we ended up just going lola poco and it was really good it worked out sans hit a lot of shots i hit a lot of heals Zar did his thing on the Lola, and I just think their comp was a little bit weak into ours. So it was really close, way closer than it was expected, and way closer than we would have liked it to be. But we did end up pulling out the win versus Shine, which sent us into the finals match versus Tribe. So our next game is versus Tribe, which is undeniably the best team in North America. 
Uh, this is something we really wanted to do because we've never actually gotten the opportunity to play them in LAN. With COVID and stuff like that that's happened the last couple of years, it's made for a pretty bad time for the LANs. So there hasn't really been any for us in North America since North America is really cautious about all the COVID stuff. Um, but, you know, this is our first time. This is our chance. And this is something we were really excited and, you know, just something we were really looking forward to. So let's hop into it and show you guys how it went down. So going to our first map with Tribe, it's Hot Potato. Now, this is a really weird map. You can play it a lot of different styles. You can play with throwers, with tanks, with mid-range, with spawnables. There's a lot of different ways to play this. We chose to go Rico, uh, Rico, not Rico, Rico, Daryl, and Nito. I've been working on the Nito ever since my Nito Lover video, and this is the first time I've ever gotten to play it in comp, pretty much. And it worked out very, very well. So basically what our plan was for the duration of the match was OG was on Daryl. He's our new tank main all of a sudden. He was just going to go and do damage. Sometimes he defended, but he played it really well. And then myself and Zar would kind of take care of the primo and the mid with the Nita and Daryl. And we did a really, really good job at that. Now, obviously, Nita has the bear and we went hyper bear because it is heist. And it only got on safe one time, but when it did get on safe, it did a lot of damage damage as you guys can see the safe went down 50 percent in like 10 seconds or something 15 seconds and it was just absolutely crazy the one time we got the bear on safe the nito was definitely the pick and i was very happy that we ended up winning with it but yeah let's hop onto the next set and uh show you guys what happens there so next we have canal grande which is a horrible map i do not like it and we went gene daryl and squeak so i actually think we had a pretty good comp i think theirs is slightly better but it was definitely winnable for us they had fang sprout and janet and, you know, we played pretty well, but at the end of the games, when they got position, they just held on to it and they did really well. You know, it was really even for majority of the game. We even had a lead probably for majority of game one, maybe even game two. But once they just got that positioning, it was brutal, especially as Livy on the sprout. There was one time where he trapped me and OG inside this little sprout while well, it didn't kill us, but just trapping us and making us just stand there and do nothing. I mean, it's a little bit embarrassing that he was able to do that. Um, so well played to them for this set. The set was really good by them and uh, they definitely deserve this one So the next map, uh, it was a little bit weird. So the entire time when we were playing these matches We actually had zero plan for draft zero plan for our bands just zero plan for anything So we faced the sprout on canal. We did not enjoy the experience of playing sprouts so, You know, we're like, you know what? Let's just ban all three throwers because why not? So we ended up banning tick grom in sprout and because the throwers were banned we're like, okay, I feel like go. We feel like going one bow is really good because you can just stand in the bow totem and get super. So we ended up going bow, penny, and fang, which all have really strong supers, especially the penny. And since they can't take it out with throwers, it's just shooting at them all game, and it worked out very, very well. Something that's also really important during knockout is the end phase. We basically waited to the end every single time, and. I think we played it basically perfectly every time. This is something we mess up a lot of the time. It takes a lot of communication, a lot of synergy, but we were just kind of in the zone and we were doing our thing and we did really, really well at the end of all these games. OG with really timely fang supers. Zar with really good pinches. I'm just running around auto-aiming at the end, but doing it smart, I guess. And it all worked out really well. And uh, that was the key to winning this set for sure. So going to the next map, we played Dueling Beetles and we ended up with Janet, Griff, and Poco, which... I mean, it's a decent comp. I don't think it's the best comp. They had Lou, Amber, and Max. I honestly think they had comp by a little bit, but I think we played it really, really well. Uh, our goal was kind of just open our side with Griff, try and, you know, just make it a little bit more of a range map, but make our side open and their map closed so they have choke points that they have to walk through. And I think it worked out pretty well. So again, I don't really think we had comp, but we played it really, really well. Zar absolutely popped off with Janet at one point. A few times he got some double kills. He was just an absolute menace in their spawn for a very good chunk of the game on many different occasions. And he just played really, really awesome this set. At the end of game two, it was really, really, really close. We had some really good plays. Zar flied in. I hit him with the heal and did some damage to the other team. OG held his ground really well. It was a lot of panic. There was a lot going on, but we did end up clutching it, barely winning, and that would give us the finals win over Tribe. So going on to our grand finals match, we're facing Tribe again. So why are we facing Tribe again if we just beat them? Well, there's a loser's bracket in this. Now, I actually like tournaments that have a loser's bracket, and I think it's really good when you have this format. So the winner of the finals, and I'm putting it like this because it's not actual finals, 
is put into the grand finals and has two tries to beat whoever comes out of the loser's bracket. I think it's really smart like this because you're giving someone who lost another chance to, you know, redeem themselves and win, but you're giving an advantage to the team that won from the winner's bracket by them only having to win once and the other team has to win two times. So we play another best of five versus tribe. If they win, we're going on to another one. And if we win, we win. So I forgot to say this, but the entire last match versus tribe, we played myself, Czar and OG. Again, we had some substitutes and some plans to make changes, but we thought we were playing really well and we just kind of wanted to keep up that momentum. So we kept us three in. We ended up winning. So then when we got to the grand finals again, we started off with the same three. Again, had some plans if we lose to make some substitutions, but if we win, we're obviously going to keep going with the three that's playing really well. So we started off on gold arm. I know it says deep diner, but it's gold arm. And we had a very similar strategy as we did before. We always have thought, and this is going back three years the tribe is really good with throwers they're really good at holding control and really good at just playing their style of game so when we banned triple thrower and it ended up working out really well for us we're like all right we got to do this again but they had first pick this time so we ended up banning tick sprout and then gene so this way there's one thrower open i feel like you kind of have to ban gene if the other team has first pick but i'm gonna give this draft full credits to coach sword my dude absolutely popped off here uh, definitely his best showing of coach all year. And uh, we ended up taking Grom and Fang 2-3. Now, a lot of people we got think thought we got outdrafted here because, I mean, they got Bo, Janet, and Bonnie. Uh, but I think our comp was really good. We had the only thrower. We had an assassin type of thing in Fang, which is really good on this map. And then we had Colette, which is fully hard counters Bonnie. And I think does really well into Bo. So although this draft is a little weird, I think we have a pretty good one. So really similar to how the last knockout went on gold arm it was kind of even until the end and just whoever played the end game well ended up winning again we had really good communication og went in at the right time basically every single time and it just ended up working out very well i think this is personally one of my best sets uh i do like playing colette a lot but i really think the entire team just played it absolutely amazing here we did amazing uh everyone popped off at different moments and i just think this is our best set uh in the entire match so i forgot to mention that these matches are best of five so it's normally a best of three best of five which means five modes and then a best of three but it was a best of five best of five so every map you had to win three games so it was really really long uh and they couldn't have chose maps for it to be longer on our first two maps were gold arm and now we're playing on backyard so we ended up with bonnie squeak and penny i really liked our comp they had colette brock and dog now personally i would rather have their comp here uh i think colette into bonnie is kind of just a free lane uh brock is not the greatest out of all these brawlers it's probably the weakest out of the six but i still think it's pretty good plus it opens up the map which i think is really beneficial for them and then they have rough so if they just power themselves up it works out really well now we do have squeak though so we're trying to match up the squeak onto the roughs the entire time and og did an absolutely fantastic job of just kind of bullying his livy on that right side and uh doing his thing now i had a few messed up jumps with bonnie so i mean i kind of costed one of the games with that uh but we did really well uh, throughout the entirety of the set and we ended up winning 3-1 now although we won 3-1 I feel like we actually played really well during the entirety of it again I think they have a really good comp I think we just played it really really well uh, we did a lot of really nice team plays had a lot of really nice goals and I think it just worked out really well um, again all three of us played really well this set it doesn't happen too often where I think all three of us communicate well play well and play as a team but it definitely happened this set in the last set so I can't really be more happy with how we played in these two sets and after playing so well in gold arm and on backyard it brings us to our third set shooting star which you guys know we love so we're really comfortable with drafting on shooting star we kind of messed it up uh versus west coast earlier on which you guys saw so we weren't going to mess up this one they kind of just went with the standard bands bonnie nani and piper and we banned bell carl and max now those three are just good brawlers we like playing Jean, so we wanted to first pick Jean. Uh, they went Tick and Lola, which I think kind of was an interesting two picks. I definitely wouldn't have gone that. And then we just followed up with Brock and Fang, and they last picked B. So game one went really slow. There was only one kill for the majority of the game. 
and with about 15 seconds left, I went in and I hit a pull. I ended up dying, but we had the lead anyways, and OG being OG, I don't know, he wasn't really looking at the score maybe, or maybe he thought we were losing, I don't know, decided to go in, and he stayed alive at like 70-something HP, which was crazy. If he just supered backwards, it would have been like a 100% guaranteed win. Uh, but he went forward, he survives on like 70-something HP, and that is going to give us the game one win. Kind of wild, that one definitely could have ended up in a loss, but we took the W anyway, so that is how game one ends. So the end of game two is just as wild. So they end up getting us pinned back in the very back of our map with about 15 seconds left. Zar is low. I'm, I don't even know how much HP I have, but we all have, well, at least myself, you know, GF supers, they're pinning us back and we have to go. We can't just wait there or else we're going to lose. So OG ends up diving in. He trades with his Livy, but he ends up, but he has more stars. I don't know. I think he had more stars. So they end up getting the lead, but then Zar hits a two tap and then super Zulon, another clutch Zar Brock play. We've seen this countless times before, and we end up winning game two just as wildly as we ended up winning game one and that gives us the 2-0 lead in the set when we're up 2-0 in set so all we got to do is win one more game and we take home the dub so the end of game three is basically the exact same as the end of game one and the end of game two and in terms of just how wild it was but this this is like years of chemistry in the making i was very proud of this so og decides to go in which is smart because we're gonna get pinned in the back but i think he goes in a little bit too early he ends up getting tapped a little bit too much, so I have to step in and body block for him. As I step in and body block for him, I end up getting tapped, so I get put to 3 HP, but I get my super. So as Livy shoots me, and then OG steps forward, he body blocks for me after I body block for him. We end up pulling his Livy. OG gets the kill, he gets his super back, he goes in, supers the next two, and then we win by fully sweeping Tribe 3-0 in the Grand Finals and taking home the LAN W. So this was absolutely insane. You guys know that we've been on a really bad streak of not losing, but not doing as well as we're accustomed to doing. That's kind of why I've been taking a little bit of a break from content. I'm really passionate about competing, wanting to do well and stuff like that. And when we're not winning, it's not like I'm super sad or anything like that, but I put a lot of time into it. And when we're not winning, I put even more time into it so that we can, you know, do better. Uh, but now that we won, you know, I think I can take a little bit of time to start making some more content and stuff. We have a very big monthly final coming up in a week that's probably going to determine if we go to Worlds or not. So that's, you know, going to take a lot of my attention in the next week. But I'm super proud of this win and I really wanted to share it with you guys. Um, thank you guys for sticking around and watching the videos, even though I literally have taken a month long break. Uh, but this is a really big moment for me. My first land win there, you know, hasn't really been much lands in Brawl Stars. So to be able to be a winner of one of them is really, really awesome. Um, and hopefully this puts our, our team back on the right track. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking with the channel. Uh, I appreciate the likes, comments, subs, all of that. And I will see you guys again soon. I promise. Peace. Hey you. Yes you there watching this on your phone. Have you ever wanted to be the best? The most handsome? The most loved player on your team? And support your favorite creator at the same time? Well I have good news. You can be all of that and more, by using code Bobby. But you have to do it now because this is a limited time offer. Use code Bobby at any Supercell Games store.